In this video, we're going to go over the pros and cons of having a dog in 2023. To help us understand this better, I have invited my brother-in-law, Riley, to be a guest speaker on the channel to talk about his feelings on owning a dog. This is probably the most awkward video I have conducted because I'm on the floor with my brother-in-law and he needs a lot of attention. He's got a really, really good life going on. They say there are many good-looking people in Los Angeles. My brother-in-law is definitely one of the beautiful people here. And he's organic, all natural, without any plastic surgery. Check at this. While there are immense benefits of owning a dog, such as support animals, emotional support animals particularly, being guard dogs, and also um, animals for those with disabilities, there's also a lot of downfalls with owning a dog, such as cost and time. Today, I hope to objectively explore the pros and cons of owning a dog so that you in front of the screen can subjectively make a decision on your own. Now, keep in mind, my brother-in-law Riley lives in Los Angeles right now. He is definitely an exceptional dog. He is a purebred golden retriever and needs a lot of attention as well as has an exceptional diet. Purebreds actually have higher incidence genetic disorders than most dogs, and so it costs a lot, therefore, to have a purebred in your house. So let's get to it. Riley needs about three hours a day of attention. This includes his playtime, his morning walk, and his afternoon walk, including potty breaks in between. He also needs a lot of time when preparing his food, as well as cleaning up after him. So if you are getting a dog, Please note that you're looking at realistically spending three hours a day or 21 hours on average a week. That doesn't include cleaning. So Riley is a purebred and sheds a lot. And so a lot of the times people find themselves having to scramble around getting a new vacuum because there's a lot of hair associated with owning a purebred dog. Adding on two hours a week of cleaning up after him, you're looking at a realistic number of 23 hours a week of owning a purebred dog. There are two types of costs associated with owning a dog. The first one is your upfront cost, and the next one is a recurring cost. Upfront costs include collar, licensing, getting all the different vaccination, the initial adoption fees, and maybe getting a few toys here and now and there for the dog. For Riley, when he was a puppy, adoption, vaccination, all that taken into account, it costed us around 2,500. Riley is an exceptionally well-behaved dog. In general, as a puppy, during the first year of teething, we've heard a lot of stories of pupping teething and then for destroying a lot of furniture. So just to be safe, look at around $500 to $1,000 upfront furniture costs for the first year of owning a dog, particularly in their puppy phases. The most expensive cost of dog ownership for Riley, a purebred golden retriever, is his food. Since purebreds are so subjective to a lot of different genetic disorders, we try to feed him a very, very clean diet. Riley spends around $130 each week on really good food, grain-free, organic, lots of different meat types, etc. That comes to around $6,760 per year for food for Riley. Riley also gets treats. But treats are pretty cheap because he gets such good food, so he spends about $200 per year on treats. Grooming is about $200 only per year because a lot of the times grooming and washing we do ourselves at home. Preventive care. Since Riley is a purebred, he needs to take a lot of different preventive care vitamins. That means it's really, really helpful because he actually doesn't have to go to the vet very often. He spends about $600 per year on preventive medical expenses. Riley does not go to the vet very often. He would spend around about $200 on the vet every year. When our family goes out on vacation, thankfully we have a lot of family friends who want to take care of Riley, so he spends zero dollars on staycation. Now, bear in mind if you're trying to get a dog, dogs can't travel with you. And so a lot of the times, if you don't have family friends around, you're looking at staycation, doggy daycares of around $100 at least per night. Altogether, Riley's annual cost accounts to about $7,760 Per year. Take into account that Riley will probably live until 12 years old. In his lifetime, Riley has spent about $93,120. If you take into account 2% inflation for a decade, realistically speaking, Riley will be around $95,000. The third con of which some people choose not have a dog is the idea of 
sadness that you will experience when the dog eventually passes. Dogs generally have a lifespan of 12 to 15 years old and there's been multiple stories of why people choose to not have a dog when they realize how much they miss their old dogs and it's really hard to move on. So do know that you do have to go through a period of hard grieving once you choose to commit to have a dog. Although expensive, I definitely think Riley was an investment because he has been able to provide some phenomenal medical benefits to the family. Outside of cost, there are a lot of good things associated with having a dog. For example, the amount of physical activity as a family definitely increases with how much you have to walk a dog. Two is also the decreased rates of depression. According to the American Heart Association, pet ownership is associated with lower anxiety, lower work-related stress, increased physical activity, and overall increased sense of belonging. And number three, Riley is definitely a friend getter. There's been multiple times where we've taken him out as a family and the amount of people that we get to meet on the road and therefore become close friends is all because we had a dog and the dogs bonded in the first place. This video serves as a reminder definitely for people my generation, especially millennials and Gen Zers looking to get dogs. Often we want to get a dog, but we forget how much responsibility, just how much it takes to own a dog. 23 hours a week is a lot if you're doing a full-time job and a bunch of side hustles as well as if you're a frequent traveler. There's been multiple stories of millennials and Gen Zers not being able to take care of a dog and they're leaving their dog with their parents while they're away. If you are going to do that because you know that you are a frequent traveler, first ask your parents if they are willing to have the dog because chances are they want to live their lives and not have to take care of a dog for you. Another factor is a lot of the times in our generation, we don't have enough money to buy a house yet and so we're renting. A lot of rental areas don't allow dogs, especially dogs that come from homeless shelters with a lot of mental traumas and problems. So before owning a dog, think about where you want to live and if the area that you want to live in does allow for pets. And sometimes you have to pay an extra fee for pets. In our generation, we are really looking at building money and if we get an animal too upfront because of an impulsive decision, often it's not only bad for the animal's health because we don't have enough time to take care of the animal, but most importantly, it's bad for our pockets and, our, and adds to our financial stress. I hope that was helpful, you guys. Take care.